What's up guys, it's Brandon Flash. You're joining me in Dallas, Texas at a Tesla supercharger. I've got a rental Tesla behind me that I've put 1,100 miles on in the last 72 hours or actually less. So let's talk about some of my thoughts. Hopefully the wind isn't too bad and see what I liked and what I didn't dislike. I did want to just point out that this supercharger has literal bowls at it. So I guess that's a new way of saying that you're a Tesla bowl. But just to be clear, I don't own any Tesla stock. I don't own any automaker stock. Uh, I did compile some lists of things that I liked about this Model 3, but let's start with uh, the spec of this Model 3. So this is a 2022 Tesla Model 3 rear wheel drive. It does have the ultrasonic sensors, which the 2023s do not. Uh, has basic autopilot, has the lithium iron phosphate battery, has the 18 inch aero wheels, and it has the black interior. So pretty nice, uh, pretty basic spec, has some window tint, things like that. And while we were here in Texas, uh, we drove from Dallas all the way down to San Antonio through Waco and Austin, uh, and then across to Houston and back to Dallas Fort Worth. So it was a really nice uh, long trip <laughs> on the Texas Triangle as they call it. Uh, and really got to experience this Model 3 in a variety of situations, city driving, interstate driving, uh, higher speed interstate driving, and traffic. So really good uh, kind of all around experience, lots of charging. Did use CCS as well, I brought my CCS adapter. Um, so as far as things that were really good about it, I have some notes here. The charging was actually surprisingly excellent. LFP Model 3, lithium iron phosphate, you can actually charge it to 100% and Tesla actually recommends that. Uh, it's better for the LFP batteries to be charged to 100% on a fairly regular basis uh, because that helps calibrate it. And if you charge to 100%, you actually see that the car will tell you that it's calibrating the battery pack. So charging was actually really good, 175 kilowatt max, but it had a really good curve, and I'm gonna have a deep dive on the curve coming. That'll be a separate video, so make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, but overall, very impressed with the charging performance, even given the small battery pack and slower max charging speed. Uh, it does seem to have a variable charging curve, however, so I'll get into that on a separate video. Efficiency was excellent. Uh, lots and lots of driving at higher Texas speeds. Speed limits here are 75 miles an hour pretty commonly. Uh, and the average efficiency, even sometimes going over that speed limit, 70 or was 280 watt hours per mile, which I am blown away with. Uh, just absolutely fantastic efficiency, nothing to complain about in that regard. Range is pretty good. Uh, it has about a 60 kilowatt hour battery, and that works out to about a 200 mile interstate range, which is not bad, but not fantastic. Uh, I'd say I'm pretty happy with that. And especially given the Tesla charging network and how common the stations are, you really don't have any concern at all for range with this model, or really with any Tesla, realistically. Uh, the auto wipers, they're downright terrible. It was raining this morning in Houston, and auto wipers were just freaking out, couldn't regulate themselves well. So Tesla doing Tesla things still, and refusing to include an actual sensor for the rain and it just makes the auto wipers terrible as a result. I missed my ventilated seats coming from my Rivian. That's definitely a first world problem, but uh, especially with the hot, humid weather here in uh, Texas, even in February, definitely missed my ventilated seats. The base audio system uh, is pretty good, but it was lacking some low end clarity, I would say. Definitely can tell that it doesn't have a subwoofer, but for most people, it's gonna be totally fine. Most disappointing thing was actually the road, road noise. Uh, even with the double pane glass and some of the improvements Tesla's made with build quality, things like that, it was still really loud in my opinion. And that was across all sorts of different road surfaces, groove pavement, uh, or sorry, groove concrete, pavement, all sorts of things. So it wasn't just one particular road surface. It was just quite loud, unfortunately. The ride quality, however, is actually really excellent. I was really impressed with how well the car rode over big bumps, big undulations, uh, divots, things like that. Very comfortable, very composed at all speeds. Super impressed with that from Tesla. Disappointed a bit with Vision Autopilot and that it still has an 85 mile an hour speed limit. 
Uh, in Texas, that's just not really enough, unfortunately. Uh, they just need to bring it to parity with older autopilot and bring it up to 90 or bring the radar back if they can't do it with vision. It's that simple. The app rocks. I rented this car through Turo. Uh, it's been a while since I've used a Tesla for a long time. And the Tesla app, having access to that was just fantastic. It is by far the best app in the business. Does everything you need it to. And uh, it's the gold standard as far as vehicle apps go. Autopilot on unmapped roads is really nice. Coming from my Rivian, uh, it's really nice to not have to be on a mapped road in order to use adaptive cruise control and lane keeping. It's the small things. Uh, the seats in the Model 3 and of course the Model Y as well, absolutely fantastic. Of course that's subjective. Everyone has a little bit different body and will fit differently in different seats. But for me personally, 1100 miles in three days, still very comfortable, love the seats though I do wish they were ventilated. The car drives like a go-kart. I love the small steering wheel, the round steering wheel. Please don't put a yoke in the Model 3 Tesla. I will not buy one at that point, but just drives great. Kind of makes you want to drive like an a-hole in traffic because it's so small and darty and easy to drive around, but is what it is. And the launch on the LFP Model 3 does seem a bit artificially limited. So it seems like it could have a lot more power off the line, but Tesla's limiting it, maybe for traction, maybe just to keep the product line a bit differentiated. But I think something like the Nginx Boost 50, I believe that's available for the LFP cars, uh, would really make a big difference in how sporty it feels off the line because it has plenty of power once you're on the interstate and kind of in that mid-range speed. So uh, I think they could make it launch a lot harder and it'd be a lot more fun. And two minor things. So I think the Model 3 needs a capacitive steering wheel. And if you're not familiar, my Volkswagen ID4 and now my Rivian R1T, they both have it. So that actually detects when your hands are on the steering wheel so you don't have to do torque-based uh, driver attention monitoring essentially or via the camera that the Model 3 uses. And another minor thing, I do wish that the Model 3 and all Teslas had a hotspot functionality because I was using my phone hotspot while I was the passenger for a bit. Uh, and it's just not great while you're driving down the road. My Rivian hotspot works really well. Uh, I've uploaded many videos from the passenger seat while driving and even as you're going along the interstate works really well. So in summary, I do think that the Model 3 rear wheel drive uh, LFP battery is an absolutely fantastic car. Would recommend to just about anyone as long as the Model 3's form factor and size works for you. Of course, it won't work for anyone or for everyone. But if it doesn't work for you, then maybe a Model Y would. Uh, very easy to recommend, supercharging, just awesome. Overall infotainment, just awesome. You could toss just about anyone into this car and it would work for them. You could tell them to drive across the country, they'd be able to do it, it's that easy. And I can't say that about just about any other EV, unfortunately. I hope we get to that point very soon, but the integration that Tesla has across all the different things is just unparalleled. It's Pretty much perfect, unfortunately. Well, fortunately, I guess. But I'm really seriously considering getting one. I don't think I want to replace the Rivian, but it would be kind of nice to have a cheaper car. Rivian's pretty expensive. So leave your comments down below. Would love to hear what you guys think if I replaced the Rivian with a Model 3. Would maybe go with the performance. Uh, but if you haven't already, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I'll see you on the next one. Thank you guys for watching.